I'm going to just run you through real quick kind of how I would have approached this. Um, as you can see, I'm just going off of the basic sketch of the sketch that you had supplied. Um, I did scale the side view up a little bit just so it's a little more aligned. And what I did was I did a quick selection in Photoshop and then just said crop and save this out as the front view and then cropped this and saved it out as the side view. Um, just so I had those. I'm sure you that part's not a big deal. So then what I did was I would jump into Maya and in Maya itself, front view, side view. Rather than creating image planes that I would throw up, I would go view, uh, image plane, import image, and then go to my desktop. And that's my front view. So I do cataract front and say open and it comes up and then I would make sure to select it go to my move tool and move that sucker off to the side a little bit one way or the other um, I'd probably move it back a little bit since this is my front view and then right here on the side view I'd go view image plane import image um, and go to my desktop and go cataract side et voila now i have the two things in my viewports and set up and i'm just moving it over and for all intents and purposes i'm just trying to make kind of like an l with this just so i have it both in place um once you have them in there since you're working in maya you can come over here and just change your alpha gain to like 0.5 and that dims it down so it's not quite so stark and that way when you're working with your model, especially if you're working with, um, you know, like with white lines, since that's, that's the default, it'll be a little bit easier to see what you're working with. Oh, the other thing I might do is I might select both and just bring them up so they're above the ground plane. But that's more of a personal thing. All right, so you got this to work with. Now, um, since you kind of jumped in, uh, it looks like obviously what you did was you started with just a ball, which totally get why you would go there initially. Uh, for if you're not going to do the patch modeling thing that they were kind of telling you to do, I would probably have gone with a box. Now, um, pretty simple box. I'm just going to scale this sucker up a bit, and then I'm going to hit three to smooth it out. The cool thing is it's still four-sided. Everything is still nice and four-sided and gives you something to work with. Now, I'm going to hit the one key to unsmooth that. And the other thing I would do to make my life easier would be to go to Mesh Tools. I would insert an edge loop. I'm just going to throw one edge loop in. This comes up. I'm going to jump over to... Uh, uh, what, are, what am I doing? I was there in the channel box. The poly split ring that I have now in, put in place. So I'm just going to select that and I'm just going to change this, the weight. That determines um, basically where it is. So z like 0 would be all the way to the left, uh, 100 would be all the way to the right. So I want it centered so I'm going to do 0.5 and that gets it dead center instead of 0.513 which is just off center a little bit. Now the reason you do all that is I'm going to right click, select face, Select all these faces over here and delete them. All right, that's what you end up with, which is like, so what was the point? Now, the cool part is I got this going on. I'm going to do edit, uh, duplicate special. I will then select a little box so I get this pop-up and I want an instance and everything else I'm pretty much gonna leave alone, parents fine. We are going to scale just on the one axis x y z because x is first y and then z the only one we want to scale it on is on the x and we want it to just be a one to one ratio so i'm just going to put a negative in there obviously that was this was already set up because i've done this a bunch of times i hit duplicate special and that my friend is the end result now it's like okay what's the big bloody deal this is the big bloody deal if you don't know this check this out Grab that, and now it mirrors itself naturally over to the other side.
all right? Now, since you already know you're going for this rounded thing, you don't want to start throwing a bunch of poly split rings in there because it'll, it'll start, you know, it'll get rid of the softness of it. So what I would do is hit three, and as you can see, it's already kind of rounding this sucker off a little bit for you, but you're also getting this flatness. So that's something you could always work with. Um, having this in place, I would, or you could come in here, do vertexes, select to those, select that and that, and you could start to do stuff like scaling that in a little bit. It'll probably help to round it back out some. See, and that's how we begin to get back to a more rounded feel, just by shifting stuff around. But the other cool thing is, you now have a much finer control over where you put detail in. Now, once you kind of get something that feels about right, which this is getting to that point in terms of roundness, um, to not have to keep fighting the whole rounding off thing like we are, I would take this and go, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? Modify, convert. Uh, smooth mesh preview to polygons. Basically, you're saying, hey, I'm cool with this. Now, you end up with something that's kind of rounded off, and you have nothing but quads, whereas with what you had, you have some issues because you have some triangles in certain areas. Um, now, a couple things I would point out to you. I noticed you did the whole thing with the ears, which was okay in terms of making it a whole separate polygon. Personally, I probably would have attacked it this way. So you take this and you can just extrude out, pull that out a little bit, you can scale them in a bit, scale them in a bit, all right, and you begin to get something that looks kind of cool and funky like that. Now, of course, if you were to hit the three key and smooth it, you end up with that, but that doesn't quite feel right because this should be a little bit sharper. You don't want it quite so smooth, or you don't want it quite so smooth everywhere. So things you can do, you can do mesh tool, insert edge loop, and you can throw an edge loop in right there. See how that immediately begins to define that for you a little bit more? So you might even undo that, turn this off, and then do another edge loop. I'm going to do it this way so you can get a better feel for, depending upon how far you throw it down there, determines how defined that is. I might even throw one more up here just to define the top a little bit more because what you have comes to a kind of a point. And so by doing that, it will allow me to then come back in here and I'm going to hit this just to come out of that tool and grab these faces. And I'm going to hit the shift and the right arrow key. That allows me to extend my um, selection set area. I will then begin to scale all this in. See how I begin to pull that in? All right, so if I do that, and then I begin to move it forward a little bit. Now I begin to set myself up. To maybe even switch it up, go vertex with it, select all these. Yep, I'm missing that one. Just gonna swing around, get that one. And now I can pull those back. And see, I'm beginning to get a little bit of that curve that you have in there. And then the other thing is, since I've done all this good work setting that sucker up, I can come in here and do faces and do a little bit of work with uh, bringing those in and down just a touch. And then I can do another one. And check this out. Now I can begin to hollow this sucker out and just bring it down some. And I'm beginning to get what looks a bit like what you're going for, my friend. So just by rethinking how I approach it, I'm beginning to get some of that definition. And the best part is it's all in 
one model, it's all one solid thing, and I can begin to define which areas I want smoothed and how much. So right here, this, I'm getting that nice hollowed out area. If I wanted to come back in here, I can start working with these a little bit and just shift some of these around to get rid of that, that um, seam I'm getting there because yours kind of just melds into it a little bit more. So at this point, it'd really just be a matter of coming in here and adjusting the positioning of some of these to begin to smooth some of this out a little bit. Let me grab that. Of course, it's going to make me look the idiot as I record this now. <laughs> ah, sneaky bastard. There it is. See, now I bring this out, bring it down a little bit, and as you can see, let me zoom out, hitting the A key zooms us out, F zooms in on whatever you have selected. As you can see right now, I have begun to smooth that out, and all I did was adjust the position of these two a little bit in relationship to each other, and within the smoothing, it's doing a lot of the work for me. So right there, you can see where I have something that's beginning to look like the ears rather than that whole separate thing that you had, which was not terrible. It's not a bad way to go, but it will make for some issues later on. Now, same thing I just did in terms of the ear. Guess what? You can apply pretty much the exact same concept to how you'd want to approach the legs. Now, looking at the positioning of the legs where you have it kind of coming off the side a little bit, that helps define for me where I want to select. So I would switch to face mode and I would say grab this and this and this and this. All right, and I realize I'm running through this a little fast, but I'm just trying to give you a relative feel for what it is I'm doing. So I might switch views to like maybe this view. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. Let me check something real quick. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yep, I'm good with all that. All right, cool. So now I'm just going to say, let me throw a little bit of... Oh, thinking I'm in the other view. Yes, I'm, I'm a big fan of working in perspective view, although I try not to encourage students to do it. Um... I'm going to start in the front view rather than that side view. Oh, other thing I might normally do is make sure to line this up, but I'm kind of freestyling on you a little bit, which so that would make your life a little bit easier. Um, so I'm just going to pull this down. Now, initially, it's going to be like, well, what the heck is all that? And you're losing that definition. But this is one of those times where can always switch back to something like this and I one of my favorite things to do is to grab this sucker and just use my scale tool to even this out a little bit and looking at what you have since he has kind of this slightly you know legs out I'm just gonna push that out a little bit so I've literally brought it down from the hip joint all the way down to about that first knee type joint or that first joint no, knee type joint, the first joint. All right, so I brought that down to about here, I'm, I'm guessing, and it should come back a bit. Then I'm gonna do another extrusion, and the extrusion tool is fine, but the movement tool on the extrusion can be funky, so a lot of times I'll switch, and with the face already in place, I'll just use the actual move tool. And then what I'm gonna do is, check this out, I'm just gonna begin to use my scale tool and scale all that in a little bit. Now, I realize I'm just throwing some larger shapes in, but a lot of times what you wanna do, especially when it comes to, to box modeling, but most modeling in general, the watchword is get your major shapes in place and you can always go back and add definition later. So if you notice, I brought this first part down, which I guess would be the major thigh, and then that secondary joint area, I brought that down and scaled it in because the leg should be getting smaller. And then again, I'm just gonna do another extrusion and pull that down, maybe pull it forward. You notice I just used the actual extrusion tool, so 
as I said, I kind of jump back and forth depending upon what I'm doing. Um, grab my scale tool, scale that in a little bit, probably push it forward a little bit more. And then knowing that I'm going to be going from here into the foot, this is where I would take a little bit of a liberty based on what you have. I would pull this down, maybe not that much, because again, this is going to be that heel area. And the reason I'm pulling this down like so is because this is where I'm now going to switch it up just a touch. I'm going to go back to my main perspective view because, yep, I'm good there. Switch into the front view just so I can use my scale tool and scale it so it's nice and flat because that's now where the foot would be on the ground. This is actually the bottom of the foot or claw as it would be. Um, the sizing you may want to play with. I will now switch to these two polygons. Face. Yep. So make sure that one, that one. Lovely. So got those two and actually based on what I'm seeing I would probably switch to vertex mode grab these move that out a little bit maybe move these out a little bit just to give it a little more space and definition to work from and then I'm going to grab these two faces I'm holding shift so I can then you know add to my selection and right there, I'm just going to go ahead and do another extrusion. I'm going to switch to my move tool. Notice that difference when I was on the um, extrude tool. It bases it on the actual way the face is facing. So there was a slight angle up. But I know I want to pull it just straight forward. That's why I switched to just the move tool because it's basing it that on my world coordinate. And now I'm just going to grab that and pull that forward to about where I think the foot would be. And now I've defined the major foot shape. Now, that's just the length of it. Oh, did not mean to do that. I meant to do that. I wasn't holding the option key. I'm on a Mac. Um, and then once I have that, I know the foot's kind of getting wider because it's a foot, you know, it's a paw. So I would probably go ahead and just widen that out a little bit. And then grab my my scale my extrusion tool again and I'm just going to pull that out a little bit because that's going to be like the end of the ball kind of the toe area as you can see I have now pretty quickly fleshed out the character or the major body parts of the character based on what you have Beyond this, it's just going to be going in and adding a lot of definition using the exact same tools that I've already used. So again, I have a very rough approximation of what you have in terms of the paw. So I would start coming in here and doing stuff like this. Grab these, bring them back a little bit to kind of get that sloping that you have in there. Grab these, bring them down a little bit. You see I'm beginning to get some of that going on. Um, you have what, four toes, so we can always break this up. In fact, we probably will end up doing that. But even in terms of rounding it off a little bit, let's see what it looks like if we just go to round the sucker off. That's not bad, that's not terrible, that's okay. But we would definitely want more detail than that. Um, and the other thing is, look at how, I mean, the flatness on the bottom is not terrible. I'm actually pretty impressed, but we can always begin to define that a little bit more by simply coming in here and saying, all right, cool, let me throw an insert edge loop in here. I really want the bottom of the foot to have a little bit more flatness, a little more sharpness. <clears throat> See? And so that's how you begin to come in and give some definition to some of these different areas. So. Right now we have this big bowing of the leg, which I'm sure you're looking at and you're like, no, not at all what you want. Well, that's where we make some choices. For one, we know that that's a joint, that's a joint. So already, I know I'm going to want to throw some extra splines in there or extra edge loops in. So right away, I'm just going to come in and do boom, 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 boom. And I'll probably throw one in right down here. 
because that's going to be an ankle joint, although the foot's its own thing. Now, one thing I definitely want to go back and do is check this out. See how that just comes in and just kind of slides into the body, but you have this very nice defined thing, which I think is a much, much better representation. All we need to do is that, and now you're beginning to get that definition. Now, if you wanted that more muscular feel to it, it's just going to be a matter of maybe throwing in another one right here. And I'm going to turn that tool off. And when I do that, if I come back in here, so I'll let, like, say, those vertices right there. I'm just checking to make sure I didn't grab that one. Because right now, if you notice, this is feeling a little boxy. So I might even go so far as to select all of these, but I'm just giving you a rough feel. Um, back, you know, let's back up just a touch, just a hair, before I even begin going down that road. Let's do exactly that. So, I'm just going to come through and begin to round this sucker off some for you. So, this part's going to be a smidge tedious, sir. I just want to come in here and grab these. I'm literally going to just work my way down. And I'm going to come all the way down. I probably should have done this before and saved you the pain and effort. But I wasn't thinking that far ahead. In fact, you know what? I just changed my mind mid-model. I'm going to unselect these because I don't want those. These, I pretty much want them to stay where they are. Come here. Get a little closer. Perfect. And I'm going to grab these. And all I'm doing is doing a little bit of work in terms of rounding this out so it doesn't feel so boxy. Because it's not bad right now, but I can anticipate that it's going to feel a little too boxy and inorganic. So I'm just coming through, grabbing all these. And I'm just going to do a touch of work where all I want to do is say, let me grab the scale tool. Now, having said that, I'm going hard and fast at this. I'd probably be a little more circumspect in how I'm approaching some of this. All I did was bring them in. And I'm also going to bring them in just a little bit like that. And all that's going to do, the whole reason I did that is now... See how that's beginning to round out a little bit and feel a little bit a little bit more organic, whereas before it felt a little boxy. Alright, and the thing I was showing you before in terms of beginning to help define that muscle group a little bit, that's where we can come in and begin to make some decisions. So like all of this I think we're good with. Uh, so, I might actually go ahead and say, hey, let me throw another edge loop in right here, about midway. That way I'm not jacking up too much of what I had. And then, I will switch it up and grab that. And this, and this. And I'm actually just going to grab these and pull them out some and maybe even push them up some. And now, let me see what that ends up with. So... Now you see I'm beginning to develop that muscle group, something representing that muscle group. So in the same way that I pushed that out, I could grab these and maybe oh, just the shift that one, get in a touch closer, and that one, yeah, and that out a little bit more and that's not looking too bad and see all I got to do is shift that a little bit and muscle group all right so as you can see right there I have pretty quickly gone from nothing looking like what you had to fleshing this in or fleshing this out I should say <clears throat> Now, in terms of the eye, um, this is where things are going to get a little tricky. Well, I shouldn't say this is where things are going to get tricky, but 
right in here. Um, I would probably want to go ahead and oh, nope. insert an edge loop. that alone so cool I'm gonna go ahead and do mesh tools insert an edge loop I'm gonna throw one in right here I can always fix that because that's gonna cause a little seam in there just because of how close this edge loop is to that I can always bring these down and shrink them in and that'll fix that that's easy only reason I'm even doing this is I'm thinking about the eye right now <clears throat> now thinking about the eye Again, the eye is like what, a big hole in the head. So you have to kind of decide where you want to put that. Are you putting that in this area? Or are you putting it down here? What's up? <coughs> now, a good reference, if you're going to start doing the eye, would be to have a ball in place. And then you just take a ball. <coughs> Sorry about that, and you get something about the size you think you're going to want it to be. And that's a really good thing to kind of try and stick in place a little bit. <clears throat> and then you can actually begin to model around that. But before we even do that, <clears throat> I would just put that in place and help that define where I want my <clears throat> eyeball to be, how big you want it to be, all that. So if you're putting your eye down here, you want to, oh, wrong thing, move it down a touch, move it over a touch, move it forward a touch. So I'm kind of liking this area myself. So we just push that back for right now. I'm going to go face and take these two and <clears throat> you can do this a couple different ways. You can literally just delete this. You can just push back, you know, extrude, and begin to push back a little bit. I would probably do it more along these lines. <laughs> you grab it, push it in some, and then just begin to reform this a bit. So switch to vertex mode. I would probably grab these, bring them down a little bit. Actually, I'd probably grab both of these. Bring those down a touch. These bring them up a touch. Again, what I'm doing is rounding this out a little bit. I'm not going full round with it because <clears throat> the eye hole should not be perfectly round. While the eyeball feels roundish, again, this is kind of cat like, so I'm beginning to put some cat like characteristics in there. And now when I do this, I get that, which looks funky and hideous. <clears throat> This is where our good friend, the, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry about that, insert edge loop tool is going to come in handy because you're going to want to throw in some edge loops in right in here. So we can even go so far as to delete these if we don't need them. 